Do you wish you had a greenhouse, but you realize you don't really need a big one? I can show you how to make a miniature greenhouse that holds 200 plants. It's cheap, easy to make, easy to assemble. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest. Sun, moon, and star in their courses above. This is three pieces of quarter inch tubing cut to 41 inches long. That size is important. You'll see why in just a minute. To clamp them down, I use clothes pins, but you could use office clips. And just in general, something to measure with. That's my measuring tape. And I have two different types of screw guns here. My hubbies actually can drill and screw screws. Mine can only do the screws. So I needed my husband's help to drill some holes. And finally, the last thing you need here is a clear shower curtain that's your standard size and you want to get medium weight. I choose to have a second one because it gives a little bit more protection should the temperatures dip down into the 40s. If it's going to be near freezing, well you're going to have to bring those plants in. There's just no way around that. Let's talk about the supplies that you're gonna need. This is a piece of plywood that is 30 inches by 48. It's just the perfect size for the frame that we're gonna build right there. You don't absolutely have to have plywood on the bottom, but it does help keep your uh, surface underneath from getting stained. You can see that this plywood is stained. However, I bet I, this plywood is stained, but I've used it for many years. The next thing you're gonna need is two pieces of one by four that's 24 inches long and two pieces of one by four that's 48 inches long. Take a look here real close. You can see that the 24 inch size is set on the inside of the 48 inch pieces. My box store will cut the wood for me if I ask them. They charge so much money per cut, and it's really not a bad charge. To me, it's worth it. Unless you have the tools to do that readily, then go ahead and ask them to cut two pieces of your 1x4 so that they measure 1x48, and two pieces of your 1x4s so that they measure 24 inches. The first step of putting this together is to install your corner braces. They're really not hard, especially if you have a power tool that'll screw those in easily. It can be done by hand and that's okay. Get a screwdriver. So 16 screws and I want to show you this one on the end one extra screw and you'll see what that's going to be for later on. Once the four pieces of wood are secured by the brackets, then you're going to want to drill three holes. One, two, three on this side. One, two, and three on that side. Two, and three on that side. And if you can't drill the holes, you're going to have to find a husband who can. Seriously, if you leave about five extra inches on your tubes, so that would be instead of 41 inches, make it 46 inches. You can devise a way to tie those on using elastic and kind of like wrap it around figure eight. Does that make sense? I think it will work. It's worth a try. You have to be careful because you can see here there was a boo-boo that wood will split. 
So take it easy as you're screwing that hole. You can go about one inch deep and that will accommodate the tubing that's going to go in there. So push the tubing right down into the holes that you just drilled. That arch that they make is going to hold the shower curtain that I was telling you about. When you put the shower curtain on, you're going to put one of the grommets over that screw that I had you screw into the end. It's about two inches down from the top. That just keeps it a little bit more secure. Then just wrap the edges of the shower curtain around, close pin them or clamp them down. I'm going to come around to the other end and show you what I've done on this end since there's no grommets to hook. And we've got a little bit of a breeze going. You see it holds up pretty well on a little breeze. If I need to, I can tuck these ends up underneath the frame and that will hold it a little bit more secure. Now, if these hoops were any bigger, and I've done this by trial and error, if they're any bigger than 41 inches and pushing both ends a whole inch down into the bottom, then that shower curtain is not going to be quite big enough to keep the air from flowing through. And the reason I want to keep that air from flowing through at this stage is because I don't want that soil to dry out too quickly. And the action of that clear plastic keeps it nice and warm in there. Now you might, might be laughing, it's a nice beautiful day here in Central Florida, but trust me, tomorrow that cold front's coming through and that night it's going to get down to 35 degrees. My little plants, my seeds that are sprouting underneath, they're going to be just fine. There she is, all assembled. And there's room enough inside for 200 plants. Don't forget, I have that list all made out for you. Just click the link below and it will send you to a document page where you can print it. Thanks for watching. I hope that helped. Please like and subscribe. And here is your personal invitation to my Etsy shop. You'll find lessons there for children as well as a garden journal to plan out. Inside you'll find pages to record the seeds that you ordered. There's a harvest log. There's calendar pages. There's a grid for your garden plans. There's lots more, but there's also a journal for you to write down what worked and what didn't work. And that's how you learn and improve from year to year. There's also individual vegetable pages where you can record exactly what happened with that vegetable that year. Thanks again, and that Etsy shop is etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash your vegetable garden. All I have here is I have not.